What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Commander Crew episode two. As always, I'm joined by my buddies Chris, Eddie. We got our friend Josh joining us today. What's up? Welcome. What's up? What's up? Like I said, this is episode two. Uh, we're going over the brand new C19 Commander decks that are coming out later this month, uh, August 23rd. As of right now, it is August 14th. It's just around the corner. We're all super psyched. So if you missed episode one, where we broke down the Faceless Menace Saltai deck, we're going to link that in the show notes below. So make sure you go and check that video out and then come back to this one or watch this one and then watch that one. Whatever you want to do, just watch the videos. We really appreciate it. But today, we're going to be breaking down the brand new Mystic Intellect Jeskai deck. So we're going to be looking at the brand new commanders. We're going to be looking at the new cards, new synergies. We're going to break it down, tell you what we like about it, what we don't like about it, and then how we build around some of these new commanders. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright guys, today we're talking about the Mystic Intellect deck. We're going to start by going over the the lead singer, the main focus. I don't know what he looks He looks like some sort of mystical ninja guy with a weird... He looks like a boss. He That's what like he looks boss. like. We're talking about Savine the Chronoclasm. I'm surprised I got that right because I tried saying it earlier and I couldn't say Chronoclasm. First try, first too. First try, there it is. Isn't it, it's that. always okay, a first try, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> so, Savine here, he is uh, a 2 2 legendary creature, human wizard. He is 2 and uh, just guy, so 2, blue, white, and red. Uh, he says, prevent all damage that would be dealt to Savine the Chronoclasm. And then he has another thing here. It says, whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So, basically, he seems like a flashback. Uh, synergizer. He wants he wants you to have spells in your graveyard. He wants some sort of recursion uh, of those spells, mainly uh, flashback as far as the precon goes. Um, but yeah, that seems to be his his general his general gist. Um, I love just guy decks. I don't know about you. I just built the the Kai car. <laughs> I saw that look, Chris. <laughs> yeah, you know how just guy in with me. Um, I just built that. Chris the, is in love with blue cards. Oh, it's the favorite. greatest color. He yeah. hates them. He hates blue. <laughs> And I love blue. Blue is my favorite. That we'll have to make an episode about our like favorite colors and why. That'd be good. But that's for another. That's for another video. So, so yeah, Savine cares about flashback spells. I think the only, only other command. I mean, uh, there's a ton of commanders that care about spells in the graveyards. But really, the thing I think about with this deck is uh, Kess, the Dissident Mage. Right. That's the one from, from uh, Commander, 2017. It was in the Wizards deck. Yeah. Right? Mm. That's the one where it says you can cast a spell from your graveyard each turn or something like that. Well, even like Moldrotha, too. Technically, in the sense that it has that somewhat synergistic view to it, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, well, you're not putting Moldrotha in this deck. Well, obviously, different colors. There's different colors, but but yeah, I mean, as, as far as like in these colors, oh, I guess even K uh, Kess is not. Kess is Grixis. She's yeah. blue, red, black. Oh, that stinks. That was like the only card I was like, oh, I would love to play Kess with this card, but I guess we're not doing that. Well, there's also Dret Dralnu Lich Lord. What does that guy do? Uh, tap a target instant or sorcery card you put in your graveyard gauge flashback into the end of turn. So you He's tap, Demir. You, you tap him. Yeah. He's a 3-3 three, three, uh, three in uh, Demir, and when you tap him, target instant or sorcery gains flashback until the end of turn. But um, he is only a single tap guy, and um, he's Demir colors. So he's blue black, but the way it wor uh, the wording on him it's kind of similar to Savine, where it's if you uh, do damage to Dralnu, uh, rather than doing the damage to him, you sacrifice that many permanents instead. Oh, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So it puts stuff in the yard for him based off of his actual synergy too. Yeah. So yeah, when he gets when he gets dealt damage, though, you put cards in your graveyard. Yeah. That's right. I, I wanted to build around him. I thought I, when we first started playing, that was a card that I like looked at a lot and then decided for some reason I'm, i don't know demir it's Demir's fun when that happens yeah i can't tell you how many different how many different decks just kind of i i have them sitting in my like notes app on my phone oh, you know yeah. that i haven't built the, the like commander graveyard yeah un, yeah unbuilt commander decks but uh yeah so so what back do you guys <laughs> what i said back to sabine i know right 
So what what was your initial impression, or what was your guys' initial impression when you when you saw this this commander? Uh, Josh, you go first. See what's, see what's up. Um, mine is the prevent all damage that we dealt to it. I'm thinking like maybe, forget about the flashback. Maybe like, uh, like a Voltron deck. Just let him swing. He can't take damage. He won't die. Well, there's a there's a um combo. I can't remember the card. It's something something shield. Where it's you, it's like an uh, an equipment that you can attach to a creature, and it says uh, any damage dealt to you is dealt to equipped creature. There's also yes. a, there's also an aura that does it too. It's the same. It's pariah. The same, yeah. Yep. Pariah that's shield and, and pariah. Um, like that's definitely something. If you're looking to go that route, where it's like prevent damage, that's that's pretty broken. That yeah, that's that, that's what I'm thinking. Like, just that first that first text is crazy to me that like you can just swing and it won't die it almost has a indestructible while it's swinging yeah i mean it's just combat damage so you gotta watch out for for board i mean i feel like especially in our meta there's a no lot it's of... just it's not combat it's, it's all damage. damage it's all damage oh that's yeah. true that's true but it's still it's still susceptible to like board wipes and yeah basically everything but uh, um blasphemous act <laughs> <laughs> it's safe well, yeah, that's blasphemous that... act you yeah that's right in those colors, there's a lot of options to flicker protection and all that kind of jazz. So. Yeah. And I mean, the flashback. Flashback is fun. Flashback could be fun. Every time someone tries, I try to explain what the next four commanders are. I can never remember the flashback one. I don't see it as a strong, like, meta in that it's never been really played out yeah. overall. Like some people do play. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like as an entire synergy as like the uh, other ones can be. Keep in mind, it's not just flashback. There's retrace, yeah. there's aftermath, uh, there's jumpstart. Like, it, we don't have to stay with just the flashback theme, but yeah. we're we're able to play a spell for a second time out of out of the graveyard and copy it. Man, I'm on, that's that's pretty powerful. I'm, all, mm. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, uh, this is this is a straight up spell slingers deck. Uh, yeah. If if I'm if I'm manning it. Oh, it's hundred percent spells matter. Yeah, I'm question. gonna fill up my graveyard as much as I can with as many spells as I can, and I'm just gonna play them out like crazy um and then obviously i'm gonna throw in th things like uh, uh what's his name torrential gear hole yep. or um uh, what can i think snapcaster mage you know baby throw, throw them in there baby, baby jace, jace. Yeah, throw them in there so that i can play and play some cards that don't already have flashback like some extra turn spells or you know something the few that go to the graveyard there's um, um the, the the tie gam the the um blue white tie gam that says when it attacks uh, instants and sorceries gain uh, flat uh, gain re uh, rebound. Yeah. So well, that'd be, that'd yeah. be a, a needed add in that deck right there. Oh yeah, anything that gives rebound, anything that gives retrace, like Eddie was saying. Um, but they're not, they're, not, they're not being cast in the graveyard though. Retraces. Retraces. No, no, no the rebound one is. Rebound isn't. You're, yeah, you're exiling it technically and then. And then recasting and then it recasting at the beginning of your deck. With, does rebound does rebound make it so you exile it after it resolves or no that's flashback yeah yeah it flashback after it resolves it uh goes to like go on go on uh rebound just it goes to exile then comes back and then and then you can recast it but it doesn't get correct. exiled after okay. and then um the biggest thing i wish they added to this was past and flames is past and flames not in this i don't believe it is oh yeah it's not look at that so I feel like that is like the definitive yeah. cast from the graveyard card. Hey, remember when like, we played the other night uh, and I did pass the flames and then recast all the uh, instant sources out of my graveyard? That was a lot of fun. Yeah, you basically just replay the, everything you just did all I over did. again. It was incredible. It was, it was, it was the best. Um, it you know was what? not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I love those like turns when it's just like you just win from one turn because you cast 900 spells. But anyway... Um, there's one card I saw in this deck that I think would go in every one of these. Uh, Secrets of the Dead. And Secrets of the Dead is a uh, blue and two generic for an enchantment that says when you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. Oh, Pass is actually in here. Never mind. I lied to all of you. Does it, is it really? I thought I was. Yep. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> oh, that's because this isn't in, this isn't in uh, alphabetical order. That's why. Yeah. Come on, MTG Goldfish. Get this stuff in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should really yell at them. I'm not yeah, here. don't yell at them. We want, we want a sponsor. Sponsor. Yeah, we, we, all about we, you we love you guys. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll help code your website to uh, make this uh, alphabetical. Yeah. Yeah. So as you were saying, who do you like? What? 
What did you like? I didn't hear you. I was too busy looking for Fast and Flames. Oh, oh, um, the car, uh, Secrets of the Dead. It's the, uh, the two, uh, two generic and a blue for an enchantment. It says, whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. Basic. To the point. Yeah. Job done. Yeah, if you're, if you're trying <laughs> to cast Copy the spell and then can't trip every time? Yeah, that's, that's insane. If, if your whole game plan is to, to cast out of the graveyard and you have this, you're golden. Um, Throw Kefnit in the deck. <laughs> copy him off the top of your library. Then... Then, play that copy, and then play it again, and then play it out of your graveyard. And then copy it yeah. out of your graveyard. And then copy it out of your graveyard. That's insane. Like I love it. I, I'm actually, I wish I had bought, so when I pre-ordered these, I pre-ordered all four, but then I got an extra of the Faceless Menace. I kind of wish I got an extra of this one, too. I feel this would be the one you get the extras with, because it, it's a spell-heavy base, yeah. baseline, so like this is the one you'd want to actually like have like, to take apart if you want to find value. I'll probably end up getting another one of these, just so I can, because yeah. I kind of want to play this deck out of the box, too, like as is. Um, but I also want to just strip it for... But I, for I feel that this is, out of all the decks, this would be the most dirtily one, in the sense yeah. that it's going to take time to build up. Like, yeah. Out of the box, it's not going to start right away. No, I don't think so. I think you need you need a lot of setup. Um, yeah. Especially for some of these other commanders, too, that are in here, like the, the wall. We'll get to that later, but yeah, this is definitely one where, unlike you know Faceless Menace, where it seems like you're just playing morphs every turn, this is definitely something you need to, to take some time to like really get going. Which is cool. I like it. I, I mean, I would say this is definitely uh, the the Savine himself. Uh, he's not my favorite out of the deck, but we'll get. I mean, we'll get to that later too. But I, I definitely think he's you know one of the better ones uh, from I think the whole set, which is nice. But it molds I well. If, if I build if I build on this, I'm uh, I'm gonna throw Stuffy Doll in just to go after Jim for the entire game. <laughs> 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 Maybe you guys will meet Jim someday. Who knows? That's the internet. It's unlikely. It's unlikely. It'd be a long video. It'd be a very long video. <laughs> 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 Alright, so, so final thoughts on Savine. Um, anybody got anything? Any, any, any... Uh, I think it's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm super excited to build around him um, and just have another Bellslinger deck. I, I don't I don't typically. I'm not typically a just guy player. I'm not typically a red white player at all. Yeah. Typically, all all my decks exclude that 100. percent But um, this this seems really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I would say there haven't been a lot of really good just guy commanders lately. Uh, I mean, you have Narset, which is just broken. But other than that, yeah, don't forget. Narset, yeah. Don't forget what. Uh, Kai Car or Kick Car. Well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say that recently with M <laughs> with M twenty, uh, I feel like we got our first real good Jess guy commander in a while. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And now, now with with Commander nineteen, we got I think two more really, really good Jess guy command. And I, I agree with that. I'm so, I mean, my I would say my favorite. I, is I'm that my favorite wall? Color is blue. Yeah, the the wall is up there. <laughs> Uh, the wall. <laughs> my favorite color is blue, but one of my favorite color shards, or I guess wedges in this case, is is Jeskai, for that spell yeah. slinger, spell slinger style deck. But, uh, Makes sense. Yeah. What about you, Josh? What's your what are your what are your final final thoughts on Savine? Savine. I think you wrapped it all up. I think he's gonna be a great, you know, commander that we haven't seen in a while in the Jeskai colors. We definitely need a commander to kind of buff up that. Right there, but. Um, I honestly believe that he's not even the best though in 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 that in the deck yeah. to be the commander. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, all right. Speaking of which, let's move to the next one, which I think this is my opinion. I think the best commander for this deck, yeah, and I think the best commander um, out of out of most of the decks I've seen. Um, and I'm talking, of course, of Alesha of the Infinite. Did I say that right, Alesha. 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 Elsha. Elsha. Excuse me. Elsha of the Infinite. Uh, Elsha of the Infinite is two generic and Jeskai, so two blue, red, white, for a 3 3 legendary creature, Jin Monk. And uh, Elsha says uh, she has prowess, or I assume she, who knows, uh, prowess. Whenever you cast an instant or non creature spell, uh, creatures this turn get plus one, plus one, plus one a turn. Uh, when, uh, and then you may look at the top card of your library at any time. And you may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land card. And you may cast it as though it had flash. 
So it's got prowess. So whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. You can look at the top card of your library at any time. That's broken. Uh, and then you can cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land card, as though it had flash. Also broken. So basically it is a, a ley line of anticipation, Vidalcan Ori for instants and sorceries. And you know how much I love to flash things out on other people's turns. So I'm, I'm psyched about this one. This is one of my favorites, I think. So the reason why I like this so much is for... Since it's dividing top. Yeah. yeah. So you take any spell that reduces artifacts, for example, or any spell in the sense that reduces it by one, and then technically you can play, you can draw your entire deck in one single turn. Uh, you have infinite, or as many, in a sense, uh, prowess triggers, and then on top of that you can do um, target, targeted spells like uh, storm count, for example, you have the entire storm count. You have Aetherflux Reservoir, so basically you have Elsha with uh, Ethereum Sculptor, for example, which is only a two-drop, and then on top of that, you have sent the, the top. You basically instantly win the game right there. Yeah. Obviously, you need another spell on top of that. Well, there's, but say, there's a there's so many options. There's a three card combo, and I have this in my Kai card deck. Um, there's three uh, three colors in uh, three card combo in Jeskai, where it's it's any zero cost artifact. So mana crypt, right? Mana crypt, uh, ornithopter, the shields, bone saw, or whatever it's called. Um, you have a zero cost artifact. You have Jeskai Ascendancy and Retraction Helix. So, Jeskai Ascendancy. Here, let me let me just look that up really quick so I say it all correct. Uh, do 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 It says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures of the uh, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Untap those creatures. Yep. Whenever so, you cast a non-creature spell, you draw a card. Yeah. Whenever. You draw a card if you do discard a card, and it's uh, uh, three mana or uh, just guy. Yep. So with Retraction Helix, a creature, a zero cost artifact, and just guy ascendancy, uh, Retraction Helix says until end of turn, um, target creature you have has tap to return target non land permanent to your hand. So basically, you play your zero cost artifact, it untaps your creatures, uh, you play Retraction Helix on a creature. Uh, you can then tap it to return the zero mana cost artifact to your hand, and then you play the zero mana cost artifact that untaps your creatures, and then you just do that over and over again. And then you get unlimited prowess triggers. Uh, if you have um, Aetherflux Reservoir or um, you know any other storm style card, you have unlimited storm count triggers and Aetherflux Re Reservoir triggers. So I think that's a busted <laughs> combo with these like Jeskai guy cards. Yeah, and I've used. Um... The Retraction Helix combo multiple times in my uh, all kinds of different decks that I've used that are include any artifacts whatsoever because it, it, it itself can go off like crazy. Yeah. Like my Joyra deck, my uh, Shalai, all, like, all kinds of stuff like that. The side deck. Yep. So it's, it's definitely fun. Yeah, and uh, being able to play things at flash speed too is incredible. I love it. I think one of my favorite cards is, excuse me, Leyline of Anticipation. So being able to do that with just instant sorceries on a creature. I'm on board. So, I like it. I think playing against Corey, that has to be my most hated card, Leyline, because he just does shenanigans on your turn, bro. <laughs> yep. Shenanigans. Without <laughs> Nori. Yeah. Without Nori, Leyline of Anticipation. Like, if I get a if I get a Leyline of Anticipation in my opening hand, that's I don't care what else I have. Like, I'm gonna keep it. Well, probably not, but uh, more than <laughs> more than likely I'll keep it, even if it's a uh, a bad hand. Just because I love having that option of playing things at flash speed, so I'll I'll, I'll find a way to break it. So hey my guys. my only while I think this is a, a a great commander, my only gripe with it is that it's too much of a pre-built commander. So oh, yeah. what I what I mean by that is there's there's not a lot of uh, creativity that's going to fall into play with this with this commander. Um, it's it's pretty much you you're going in this direction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, it's very focused. Yeah, uh, it's 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 like a weaker Narset. Like if if you were to build around Narset, you know how that's how that deck's gonna look. Yeah. Um, and this this damn near is is the same. In fact, you could probably take a Narset deck, remove Narset from it, and throw Elsha right in, and it's and the deck's gonna function just fine. It'll just be a little bit more balanced. See, I don't I don't know necessarily if that would be the case because I feel like Narset players. I mean, yeah, it's, it's non-land cards, um, 
non-creature, non-lamp. Oh yeah, okay. Hold on, never mind. You're, uh, you're yeah. probably right. Yeah. I, I was misreading. I thought El Show was just instant sorceries. It's it's non-creature, non-land. So okay, right. yeah. It, I could see that being, I could see you being able to take Narset out. So I don't know why you ever would, and then replace. It exactly my point. That's yeah. uh, that's literally what I'm saying is we already have a Narset. Did we really need an El Show? I feel like Elsha is the fair Narset. Exactly. Yeah, it's a more balanced version. It's so, yeah. so did we actually need it? Because that deck's well, already been made. That deck's that's why built. she's like, in the 99 and she's not in the... <laughs> true. You know? True. That's how I see it. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. I, agree. I just, uh, it, for me, if I'm if I'm building around a commander, while I while I do think this is, this card is amazing. This card could be incredibly strong. Um, I, I don't know that I would personally pick it because it, I don't think it'll be as fun as Sabine. To be honest, mm. yeah. I play nothing. I play nothing but Voltron, <laughs> so I want to. I see 100. percent That's the card I would play without even question. Elsha. Which one? Elsha. Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, I guess. Oh, for the uh, prowess triggers. Yeah. So basically, I would just try to find it in, as fast as possible, uh, just to make the thing go infinite with Grape Shot, uh, Aether Flux Reservoir. Uh, or empty the warrens, or something along those lines, just to draw my entire deck in a single turn. Yeah, and, and then just go off. Yeah, just play multiple really combat cool. steps. Yeah, yeah. I'd get that, that blue cool. and that blue enchantment that gives you creature infect. I don't know. What oh, yeah. Wow. Well. <laughs> uh, it'll be tagged. What's that? I said it'll be it'll be tagged. You'll oh, have yeah. it. You'll have it up. I'll have it up. I'll figure it out. Yeah. I have it in I have it in my uh, Gisela or not Gisela. I have it in one of my decks. One of my. Uh, yeah. Azorius decks. All right. So, final <laughs> thoughts on Alesha. So, it, it, it looks like it's definitely you're kind of pigeonheld into a specific archetype. You're, you're spell slinging. Uh, you're as we called it, the fair Narset. Uh, I still think it's it's one of the better commanders, especially in this in this box. Uh, Savine is cool. I like the flashback idea or the the cast from graveyards. But for my style of play. Elsha, uh, being able to play things on, on instant speed on your uh, opponent's turns is, is incredible. Uh, and then Prowess is fun. Uh, I think this could be a fun monk build uh, with a well, lot of... Uh, it was a big thing back when Jeskai was a thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I pushed Jeskai. My favorite set of all time, besides Battle Bond, is uh, Khans of Tarkir. Khans uh, and, and Dragons, I think, are the two of my favorites. I think that's pretty much when we started uh, playing, uh, or when I started playing, at least. So, M15. So, yeah, M15 and, and beyond, which is yeah. right around that time. So, you know, I, this could be a fun, janky, monk prowess build with a lot of uh, non-creature spells. That could be fun. So that's that's my that's my opinion on it. Yeah, I mean, I um, I agree. I think it could be a lot of fun to play. Yeah. Um, I just, like I said, I feel like the deck's too pre-made. Uh, so if, if I were picking a commander, I'm going to pick something that I could be a little bit more creative with. While I think it's an an amazing commander and i i don't think anybody who who picks this will have uh, uh trouble building that deck or have or not have fun playing it because i think it could be a blast i i like the creative and the creativity behind actually structuring and building a deck yeah. and this seems too much down one lane where i can't i can't uh stray enough for my taste yeah it makes sense josh what do you think I think that you're going to build this and going to go infinite turns, bro, on turn three. That's what I see from you, Corey. I swear to God. I, and if I see it, we're not playing this deck anymore. <laughs> no, I, I, I already have my infinite turns deck, and I, I feel yeah, bad. Yeah, like half of them. I, no, no, just one, all right? Yeah, Vile one Smasher, that you bring a week. Vile Smasher has... He just swaps out the commander. Yeah, just, just exactly. over just and one over one, and over yeah. again. Yeah. That's why he loves Jeskai so much. <laughs> okay, first of all, there's no, there's zero extra turn cards in my Jeskai deck. Okay, so get out of here. Yeah, yeah. And there's only a few in Vile Smasher, but yeah, no, that, that Golos deck, I I built that I built that specifically for Jim. Jim. <laughs> because I hate I that. I brought up Jim twice. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, great I'm guess. Bleep, of I'm gonna bleep out his name by the way. When we're talking, when we <laughs> yeah, of course. We need to give a new name or something like that. I'm gonna call him. I don't John. know. John. John. Yeah. Um, oh, Voltor. But yeah, no, I I would love to I, I would love to build an extra turn stack with this, but I won't. Golos is the only one. Alright. Alright, cool. So that's that is Elsha the one. Elsha of the Infinite. We've got two more to, to cover here. Uh, the next one we're gonna stick with the Jeskai commanders uh, before we move on to the two color one. So we're looking at uh, and I'm gonna butcher this name. 
Pramicon Sky Rampart. He is a... Did I say that right? Pramicon? Yeah, it seems about right. Yeah, Pramicon Sky Rampart. He is straight just guy, so he just costs three. Blue, red, and white. That's it. Um, he is a 1-5 legendary creature wall. He is a flying defender, so like all walls, defenders can't attack. Uh, as Pramicon Sky Rampart enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction and Planeswalkers controlled by that opponent. I hate this card. Wow. I don't... Wow. That's okay. serious stuff. So I don't hate it, but I, I feel like... It. I feel like if you're building this deck, your sole purpose in the game is to just screw with everybody. How? You're, you're, you're choosing which way... So, if okay, if I was going to build this deck, every it would be a janky deck. It would not be a good one. It would just be me trying to dictate combat order. It would be that card that's in... I think it's in this deck. I could be wrong, but it's the uh, artifact that lets you change um, the turn order. So, like... If the turn's going clockwise, it's an artifact that lets you pay some amount of mana and tap it to make the turn order go counterclockwise. And then it would be like sphere of safeties, propagandas, just things to make it so like everybody can't attack you or you're attacking, you're forcing other players to attack in certain ways. It's a wall. Yeah. <laughs> That's the literal purpose of a wall. I know. Yeah. So I just don't, I don't know. So I it's think doing it's doing the right thing. I think it's just, I don't, I don't know. I don't See, know. me if I'm building this, um, I'm I'm using Mystic Barrier and I'm com I'm putting both of them into play so that nobody can attack and I'm gonna kill everybody with direct damage, yeah. damage and something so fun out of that. Just to things. like mess with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, that's you can't win with. It, let's let's be real. It's ridiculously difficult to to win with burn spells. But what if? What if it's a Jeskai deck, and what if it's a deck where nobody can attack anybody, and what if it's a deck where I can counter anything that anybody's playing because I'm running so many counter spells? See, and <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Burning the crap out of people—that could be fun. I would this is only for combat, though. This is not just for other spells. Like he's not—he's on the right path, but just just make it so you can't combat. But this would like it's say I, it's more of a D move. Like obviously, say you did the put the person on your left, like left likes to take infinite turns. This way, they can only attack you, like, me. and no one else. See, I think that's funny. I, yeah. I think that's absolutely hilarious. It is funny. I, I, I'm cool with it. It is funny. I, I, I might even go, like, just the, the chaos group. route. Yeah, exactly. It, it's yeah. more of a chaos build. If, if, if you go the chaos route and, and start throwing in things that, that uh, what's what's that card that anytime somebody casts a spell, they have to choose a, a previous spell that was, the, uh, that was exiled with it? I can't remember the name of it. And then cast that spell? The Well of Wishes or something like that? I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff like that. I think it's all Sorry, you're the one who played it. What is it? That's, what, that's how I found out about it. So, uh, every time a player casts a spell, yep. uh, they instead, they exile that spell underneath this card, and they choose another card, uh, another spell that's been exiled with it at random, one and that spell gets cast instead. No, this, when you, it's, you exile three cards out of that deck. Uh, it's one, one, one. I have no idea. I don't remember at all. Was that in the random? It's a stack yeah, deck card. Your, it's, it's in your yeah, it's stack. Yeah, when, when a battlefield, uh, each player exiles top card of their library. Whenever a ca player casts a spell from their hand, that player exile it. If that player does, they may cast another non-land card exile with knowledge pool without paying his mana cost. Yeah, that's the one. That like knowledge pool. Play with it. Play with that card. Uh, throw that card in the stack. That would be really creative. That would make this, uh, without question, a jank build. But. Uh, it would be fun. It'd be a chaos deck. It'd be really creative and, and just a blast. You see, I have a different a different route with this deck. I'm thinking super stacks. Because when you play a stacks deck, everyone hates you because and everyone's gonna come after you. But if you can limit the one enemy, that kind of beefs your chances as a as a stacks deck. Because when you start going stacks and you start getting things on the board, everyone's gonna come at you, man. See okay, you do know? you do you notice the common thread that's happened for everybody's <laughs> deck here? It's some sort of annoyance, like, I just want to, to mess with everybody, and, like, that's what I don't, I mean, I don't know. Says don't the know. person with, who plays different turns. Okay, listen, we gotta, we gotta bury this hatchet, alright, guys? I'm so no, sorry. no, no, because you're, you're That's gripe, literally your you're play style. Yeah, I know. This, yeah, your gripe is that this commander, uh, uh, gotcha. creates, uh, an environment of, um, nobody can do anything, and yeah. yet you're, 
you're playing infinite turn decks. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? I, like, I that's will give that to you. I yes, I I that's probably or actually no, that that's definitely where the 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 seated hatred of this card comes from. Like I I hate <laughs> not being, want somebody to do it to you. Yeah, I hate not being able to play. So like yeah. when we play against. Uh, John's uh, from the guy who plays the terms. Yeah, let's let no one play but me. I, okay, yeah, listen, oh, great option. listen. We're drilling this to the point that Corey will never play an extra turn spell. Oh, I'm gonna always play Gol. I love Gol. <laughs> that Golas deck is incredible. I will play that deck. Golas is too powerful. That's he is why. too powerful. He is. He is definitely. I. I think I'm going to uh, take a lot of those extra turn. Maybe not a lot of them, but I'm going to take some of the extra turn spells out of there uh, and replace them with some just cool. Big spells, big mana cost stuff, but whatever. That is designed to be out like that way, though. That's the thing. I know, but I, I also don't want to make it so like every time I pull it out, everyone's like, "Oh, Corey's gonna go infinite turns. I don't want to play this anymore." Everybody attack him. Exactly. Well, so I, now on, now on. Yeah, when Corey uh, plays his infinite turns, I'm playing my Zer deck. I'm playing Zer every time. <laughs> See, exactly. I don't want it. I don't want it to get to the point where like it's getting to, like we got to make it a competitive game and get rid of me immediately. So I'm gonna definitely power that down a little bit. Where it's not all about extra turns. There will be some in there. I'm never gonna take all take them all out, but I am gonna lower that power level quite a bit. We're honestly just busting your chops. Like I, they, I know, but it's I, I feel bad. Like I also don't want people to get super bored. Um, it, no, it's fine. I'll just start playing Dredge again. <laughs> that's okay. That's, I guess that's a, a trade that to make. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll just play it there. It'll be fun. Yeah. Got a lot of options. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But anyway, back to. <laughs> Back to uh, <laughs> to Pram Pram Pramicon 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 Pramicon. Um, yeah, he's he's besides the some of the two color commanders, he's definitely the or the, the wall is definitely. I'm not that psyched about it, but uh, I mean, I can see the I can see the fun uh, aspect of this being uh, for the person playing. Yeah, for the person playing, I can see where it could be fun. <laughs> so, but that's just me. All right, final thoughts on Pramicon. Eddie, go. I think it's just a fun or funny uh, build around. Like I said, like I said uh, when we were talking about um, not Sabine, El, uh, Elsha, um, I like I like creative build arounds and I like I like doing something unique. Um, so I, I think it could be fun. I probably won't own one, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I I think it could be fun to like build something around. Maybe it'll be one of those that you know sits on my phone in the notes section for a while. Yeah. Mm. All right, Chris, what do you think? I'm cool with it. I wouldn't build around him. I wouldn't put him in the 99. I wouldn't do anything with him. I don't <laughs> see a purpose of the guy. I don't know why they made this card. Like, clearly someone in R&D is like, yeah, this one kid I always sit on the right of, yeah. always screws me <laughs> over. I don't want him. He always messes with me. Yeah. And they're like, let's do this one thing. Because he always attacks. He never plays spells. He always attacks me. And I don't want him anymore. <laughs> the guy across from him has a lot of life, and he needs to get hit a couple more times. Yep. See, it, it was all planned out. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, Josh, final thoughts, Pramicon. This is probably my favorite one so far. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? Yeah, because it's the perfect stacks card, and I love stacks decks. He's obsessed with stacks. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, like, But you got to strategically sit down. Knowing who plays what deck, so that way you don't sit next to like a Rakdos deck that's gonna wipe that's you true. out in two turns. That's you know, true. Yeah, yeah. Everyone sits down. You're like, uh, wait a minute, uh, Eddie, can I switch seats with you really quick? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Is what Everyone's like, oh, like. he's playing Pramicon. Great. Yeah, I, I mean, if I'm playing a wall deck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the, that Bant commander, the Bant wall, dragon person. That lets walls attack. Mm. Oh, Arcadius. Arcadius, yeah, Arcadius, yep. Uh, that's what I, if I'm playing a wall deck, that's what I want to play. But, all right, so that's, that's Pramicon. We got one last commander in the new Mystic Intellect. Oh, there's a couple deck. in there. No, there's, there's one, there's one more, that's it. Well, there's also, there's Baral, there's oh, Tolerant. Besi okay, besides, the, the new commanders, the new commanders. Well, the biggest history is specify. <laughs> So that sexy. part will be edited out. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'll keep this, I'll keep it in. <laughs> All right, so for the new commanders, the final new commander. The non-reprinted non ones. Non-reprinted commander in the set for Mystic Intellect. We have Gerard, Weatherlight Hero. He is the only two-color commander in this, the new reprint, or the new... Dang it, Chris, you got me all messed up. Sound, sound it out now. 
He's, wow. he's one of the okay. two color commanders. He's one of the new two color commanders. You can't run him as the commander out of the box if you were going to just, you know, swap people around. Um, but he is Gerard Weatherlight Hero. He is two and Boros, so two red white for a 3 3 legendary creature, human soldier. He has first strike. And he says, whenever Gerard Weatherlight Hero dies, exile it and return to the battlefield all artifacts and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So, basically, uh, creature and artifact recursion uh, deck, kind of. Right. Yeah, he needs oh, to. This is, he, oh, this is flawless. He needs to. No. He needs to die in order for it to happen. But he gets exiled. which is so easy. But look at the. the you read the text though. It says, uh, "Return to the battlefield all artifacts and creature cards that were put there this turn." And it doesn't. Say, and it doesn't have to worry about that. They, they don't have to go end a turn. So basically, it's it's dies deal, come back right then and there. Yeah. Where a lot of cards are like at the at end the of the end turn of or the beginning of the next end step. Like this one is just, he dies, boom, you get everything back. Yeah, he's, I mean, for me, I don't think I would pilot this as the commander. I would put him in the in the 99. Um, and I what I do like about him, uh, unlike, um, unlike, your child of Alara deck where there's that dies trigger. I like that. It says when he dies, exile it. So you don't have to just shove him in the graveyard and then he's stuck there. I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's for me, it's board white protection. That's cool. Um, but really what, how do you break this? How do you, what do you, how do you build around this? I, Cause I'm not, I'm not a big Boros player. So that's, that's where I'll come from. Like I don't play a lot of just, well, the, pro the problem is Boros is still super weak. This is not going to be a, a, the next thing. <laughs> no. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be a, it's an eggs deck. It's just going to be, let me put a bunch of eggs in my cup, my deck. Let me do some back old school Ravnica. You just play a bunch of modular with our yeah. uh, Ravager in there. Sacrifice all your artifacts, make a really, really big guy, put all your permanents onto a uh, walking ballista. And they all come back instantly, and then you do it. They do it again. So basically, you make one giant walking ballista, and do it all again. So That's okay. So yeah, you're trying to make your walking ballista as big as it can, start pinging people and kill everything, and then bring them all back and keep doing it. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I don't know. Uh, I think. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool because my brother Tristan, he has a. Uh, Aurelia deck and he gets off going real fast, you know, but as soon as you board wipe him, it's it takes him forever to recover. And if he has this on the field, it's kinda like, do I, I really want to board wipe because I'm only hurting myself because he's gonna get everything back. And that that kinda helps the Boros in a way that they're gonna they're gonna get soldiers on the on the board, they're gonna get angels, but when you, when they board wiped, they gotta rebuild and they're not the best at rebuilding, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's would it be considered card advantage? Or is that is that something different? I guess it's, yeah, it's kind of it's pseudo card advantage because you're not you're not really gaining cards in your hand, but you know if someone board wipes, you're yeah, Josh, you're right. Where it's like no, that's card. It's really yeah. only hurting them. You're gonna get all your stuff back, all well, your artifacts and, and creatures. So, mm -hmm. but so um, it, if it's me, I'm gonna be really really mean. I'm playing Armageddon and I'm using artifact lands. Ooh, wow, I like that. But there's yeah. only that's three. Really there's there's, there's only three. three. Yeah, there's four. There's that, four. No. That puts me. Oh no. Well, three that we can play in this deck. That's oh no, true. two actually. Two. Uh, three, no, there's actually, the indestructible no. one. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so I, I, I'm three lands of, uh, ahead of everyone after an Armageddon. I'll take that any day. So no. So my first thought to this is obviously I wouldn't need him as the primary commander. Yeah. Uh, I put him in the 99. My thought was if comparing it to Safi. So. Safi, Eric's daughter, is sacrifice him whenever target creature is put in the graveyard from play this turn or turn that card to play. How would the stack work with that one? Like, could you have Gerard die and then in immediately sacrifice um, the other one and just see and see if you can get it to all come back with everyone, everyone, you know? Does he have yeah. to be exiled in order to have the trigger go off? Or is it like, when it dies... That trigger automatically goes in the stack, so then when you sacrifice it, it's in the graveyard or something you can bring back immediately, or somehow you can manipulate the stack so we can come back without having to worry about doing it all the way, like having it go to exile. You know? I mean, I feel like it has to go to exile. Well, you, you know, know like there's like the fiend hunter because uh, it has like different lines of text. This is obviously yeah. the same line of text. Does it something go along those lines where like 
This one, I was can you like interact with it as it's going through? You know, I don't think so because it's in the same line. It's in the same paragraph. Like it's not a cost. It's not an alternative. Anything. It's just you know when this guy dies, you mm. exile. So it's immediate. He's dying, and then he instead of going to the graveyard, he's in the he's in exile. I think I could be. I don't, maybe I'm. You know. You know what, guys? Help us out. Help us out in the comments. I was just gonna say that. Comment yeah. down below. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I jumped the gun. No, that was perfect. It was great. Um, yeah, and if, oh, by the way, just quick disclaimer, I know it's almost at the end of the episode, but if we get any rules interactions wrong or anything, let us know in the comments. We're sorry. Uh, if we do get anything wrong, um, we're, you know, we're, we're trying we're our human. best to, yeah, we're trying our best to make sure we get interactions and everything right. We're not judges. We're just a bunch of dudes who like to play commanders. So, you know, let us know if we get something wrong, but also we're sorry uh, if we do. But yeah, so... Yeah, I don't know. I think it needs to. I think the whole thing needs to happen. I don't know if you could manipulate it in a way where it dies and then you stack the triggers where you get everything back. I don't know, but who knows? It, it could. It could work. I'm sure. Th I'm sure there's some sort of combo out there with something that'll make it so you can bring everybody back. But yeah, someone will break it. Someone will find a way to break this. But I agree with you, Chris. I wouldn't put this as my commander. I would put this in some sort. It, I would put this in a deck. Well, because the problem is like there's feather. It's probably, hands down, pretty much the best commander there is for Boros, because it's, it's constant. It's, it's card advantage, to recursion, yep. and the, Boros is always going to be, I don't know why, it, there's, in my opinion, why it's always so bad, in a sense, because they, they need the help. Yeah. Like, in a sense, like, Gerard Weatherlight, maybe put him, like, he exiles for, with two time counters on, because he's, dri he's driving the Weatherlight, you know? It takes yeah. him two turns to come back, but in between... All the artifacts come back, but then when he comes when he comes back, all the artifacts go away. So it's like, so, flavor. yeah, you know, <laughs> I like Boros. It's like, I, it's like I want them, and I think that the flavor with Jiraiya would work out because they put so much story behind the Weatherlight. Yeah, like I feel they would just add on top of what they've already got with it. You know, I could see that. I could see that. All right, final thoughts on <laughs> Gerard Weatherlight Hero. Uh, for me, he's cool. He's going to go in the 99 in some decks. He's not going to be the main. I'm not going to build a deck around this guy. Um, I like the art. The art's really cool. Uh, art's gorgeous. That's uh, that's with my, my boy, Zach Stella. He's not really my boy, but you know, we could be friends. Uh, Zach Stella. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one. He did um, He he did expropriate. <laughs> he did... Um, Your favorite card ever. My favorite card. Uh, he did Gashoth, uh, the big dinosaur. Yeah, we've met him a few times. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's a real yeah. nice dude. We met him at a few GPs. Or Magic Fest now. Who knows? Whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, right. All right. Um, final thoughts. Josh, Gerard, what do you think? I'm thinking what Eddie said was broken, man. You just... <laughs> I'm getting. If you... I think about it. You get all your, all, all your artifacts back. So you can have a Mana Crypt. You can have, you know, some Signets. And you come back with so much Look advantage. Look at Chris's face right such... now. Look at how pissed Chris is. <laughs> I know. I hate Armageddon. I'm sorry. I, I, it's the one like I can't stand Cyclonic Rift, but Armageddon is just like the the core of magic yeah. is playing land. That's the very first thing you do. I've I've only ever seen. I mean, we've all we've all walked out uh, a few times uh, for various reasons. But Chris, you're the only person I've ever seen. No matter what part of the game it is, when someone yeah. plays Armageddon, you immediately scoop. scoop. You're done. Scoop. Yeah. I just don't like the car. I can't do it. <laughs> Chris is out of the game. Even when Chris I can come back from it, man, or matter, I'm in the like, lead, yeah. I don't. I just don't it's, like that. His car. favorite cards are land. <laughs> yes, yeah. I love. Are. I love basic planes, basic swamps. Yep. <laughs> They're great. All right. Oh man. Well, yeah. Um, that'd be broken, but not really a commander for me. Definitely in the '99 for that ability, but not a commander. Cool. All right, Eddie. What do you think? Hey, man, I'm just uh, messing around. Uh, I think that uh, Armageddon would probably not be something that I play, so don't scoop right now, Chris. Um. <laughs> you know, there are a ton of white cards that say a, same, a similar ability that say return all lands to the battlefield that were oh, yeah. in the graveyard this turn. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, no, I, I, if I was doing this, honestly, I'd probably go uh, <laughs> with more of a sacrifice aristocrat -y type build, yeah. kind of aristocrat type build. Where I do things like Ashnot's Altar or Goblin Bombardment or you know Phyrexian Altar, um, sacrifice a bunch of creatures, um, and use this guy to just bring them back and give myself a ton of advantage. Yeah, I think the the best. Um, I think it's cool. Yeah, I think the uh, best way to abuse him would be to do something like that, where 
yeah. you set up a turn where you're sacrificing your own creatures for some sort of big value. Yep. Yeah, and then you, you sack him in order to bring all those creatures back and then do everything again. Uh, I think yeah. that would be the best way to use him. But, yeah, right. um, so that's probably how I would build him, and because I don't see another route that is fun, I I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not into red-white typically anyway, so I probably wouldn't build anything wrong. All right, cool. Chris, what do you think? There's better Boros. I like them. I still, my, the direction I would go is like Arkbar and Ravager with the Walking Blitz style combo, where basically you use Krakalon Ironworks and just have a bunch of artifact recursion. Just basically make it a straight artifact, but at that point, you just can play Akiri, you can play Aurelia. There's so many other options for Boros. Yeah. I don't even see, a, in a sense, a use of the 99, because um, if I'm playing, for example, Gerard, I put her in the Akiri deck where she, her, her power equals number of artifacts you control. I don't want the artifacts to die, obviously because then she goes down to a zero power. So I don't see a real use for this. Again, maybe if it's broken in some sense, we can like work the stack. Yeah. Or again, use the Arc Bomb Ravager Ballista combo. But even still, I don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it, it's, I, I think if I were to build this, I would do what uh, Eddie was talking about. Find a way to, to abuse it for one big turn and then you know go from there. But all right, cool. So... Those are all of the brand new commanders from the Mystic Intellect deck, the, the new Jeskai deck coming out for C19. Uh, before we wrap things up here, we want to uh, do a quick uh, roundtable for who your favorite is and why out of these new commanders. So we'll start with Josh, then go to Eddie, Chris, and then I'll, I'll close things out. So Josh, uh, who is your favorite from the Mystic Intellect deck and why? Uh... The Sky Rampart, man, the wall. He has to be on my favorite because the stacks, man. Wow. I'm telling you, you guys are laughing, but I'm telling you, it'll work. It'll really work because when you play stacks, you're the most hated player at the table. Yeah. And now you you limit that down to one player, and if you strategically sit in the right place, <laughs> you you can really have an upper hand. But I really think that'll so you, be a phenomenal stack deck. You're metagaming people even in seat placement. That's cool. That's yeah. ball. Yeah. That's ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Eddie? Uh, for me, it's Sabine. Anytime I can do anything out of my graveyard, I'm all about it. Uh, um, and I think I could do something, some really creative things uh, with him. Um, and I, from, that's going to be the most fun. Uh, I, I really like Sabine out of this deck, um, out of this pre -con. Cool. All right, Chris? I'm Voltroni. I like Elsha. I want to go infinite. <laughs> Without turns. All right, simple. All right, yeah, I would have to agree. I'm going to go with Elsha as well, uh, but me for more of the flashy spell slinger uh, shenanigans I can get into. Uh, maybe throwing in a couple extra turns here and there, but you know I'm not going to go infinite with them. Um, <laughs> but no, I like the I like the, the now. yeah I say it now. Well, I like the spell slinger. I like kind of I would probably do, make a storm deck out of this. Lots of low mana cost uh, instants and sorceries, artifacts, ways to just really get a storm count up and then. Aether flux out, or you know, find some way to, to storm uh, storm everybody out. So that'd be for me. I like Elsha. I dig it. All right. So those are our favorite commanders from the Mystic Intellect deck in Jeskai. Who are your favorite commanders? Let us know in the comments down below. Let us know who you like, who you don't like, why you like them. Let's let's start a discussion. Uh, I'll be. Who do you uh, agree with? Say me. Yeah. Say me who every you agree time. With? Let's let's pit all of us against each other in a, yeah. in a pointless debate. No. Um, yeah, no, let us know in the comments who you like. Uh, I'll try to uh, respond to as many as I can uh, as we see them. Uh, but, yeah. So, all right, guys. Uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, the next one we do is probably going to be, I don't know, what, we, we want to do the Rakdos one next, or do we want to do, uh, what's the other one? We'll uh, put the coin like Rakdos does. Yeah, right? Uh, I can't even think Apparently of the, it's Rakdos, I can't even think of the <laughs> other one. It is Primal Genesis. That's why it's Naya. Naya's uh, the best, though. There's no blue in it. I'm like, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. So, all right. Well, so we'll, probably do, we'll probably do Rakdos next, and then we'll move on to the Naya. Episode. So, make sure uh, you go check out those episodes. They'll be up hopefully soon after this one. Uh, if you haven't yet watched the first episode, there's a link in the description below. Make sure you go check that out. Again, that uh, was the Saltai Faceless Menace deck that we broke down. And yeah, hope you guys like this video, and we will uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thumbs up. Take care. All right, Peace. guys. Have a good one.